Uh, Thanks very much, um, Christoph, for the nice introduction. Um, good afternoon. In this talk, as Christoph said, I would like to focus a little bit on the loss process, especially um, uh, VOC losses in organic solar cells if we um, minimize the energy level offset. So um, let's see if I can switch this. Yes, I can. Um, the motivation is, of course, we want, want to find the main cause of VOC loss at low driving force for exciton dissociation. We want to know which role is played by hybridization between the neutral called LE states and the charge transfer states. And this should hopefully bring us design rules for how to build donor acceptor systems with low energy uh, level offset. So actually answering the question, how, how low can we go with the offset? Just uh, as a small recap, and of course, that's not needed after the very nice presentation of René Janssen. Um, organic photovoltaics have a, a neutral exciton as primary photo excitation, which is a bound electron hole pair. So you need an electron acceptor for, uh, to, do, uh, to form a free uh, charge carriers, which goes over a charge transfer state. And if you use a very strong, which has been used uh, historically, a very strong electron acceptor, then this charge transfer state has a relatively low energy and therefore is coupled strongly to the ground state in a non-radiative fashion that gives um, a lot of non-radiative, uh, fast non-radiative decay and therefore a, a VOC losses. Now, since a few years, we have these non-fullerene acceptors where we can tune the levels where we can have strong optical absorption also from the acceptor side. So this gives us the possibility to have whole transfer from the acceptor towards the donor molecule and um, now the levels are pretty close and then uh, what must happen if um, the levels are close in energy and if they are also close in distance, that's just the law of uh, quantum mechanics is there, the levels are going to split. So we, we will get a hybrid charge transfer state, which will um, acquire properties also of the neutral exciton, which means uh, oscillator strength will be transferred to the uh, charge transfer state. So it is becoming brighter and therefore there should be more radiative recombination and less non-radiative recombination. So overall, um, the, the efficiency of the solar cell should go up. And of course we observe this, um, but we were interested in the question, can we, can we trace this? Can we see how the non-radiative voltage losses depend on the HOMO level uh, distance? Because if we find the functional form, this might tell us the root cause for the, the, the main actor for um, non-radiative recombination. So um, that's a uh, work of André and he, he used um, the materials, donor polymers from Christos Chokos from Advent Technologies in Greece. Um, a series of WF3 um, adducts with different um, uh, um, substituents which shift the HOMO level roughly by um, 60 milli electron volts each that we can cross um, if we combine this with standard now well-known acceptor materials so that we can um, bridge a range of about 200 milli electron volts and going in some cases even into negative driving forces. So that's the right material to do this study. And nice thing about it is it does not strongly affect the microstructure. And this means that we can concentrate on what the energy levels are doing and don't need to consider additionally um, effects coming from the microstructure. So what we have to do to calculate the non-radiative voltage losses is shown in this graph. We need the VOC, so obviously we need devices. And we need the radiative um, a contribution of VOC. And for this, we need EQ measurements and electroluminescence measurements. And here I show an example that Andre has done just for one of the combinations with, with ITIC. And there you see very nicely the monotonous behavior, how the VOC goes up um, when the, the HOMO level goes down, the CT state disappears, and also here the CT emission disappears and you get close to pure um, acceptor emission. Mm -hmm. So from this getting now the uh, voltage loss as a function of HOMO level leads us to this picture. That's now for all 
the acceptors that Andre has tried. And they showed, um, if you look at these points, at the full points, they refer to the voltage loss. And they show a very similar behavior, which does not depend on the type of acceptor. It just depends on the homo level offset. So they have this, this uh, soft slope, and then they get very steep, and then they get soft again. And um, we applied a model, a very simple model, actually. It's just a two-level a system consisting of a local excitation, those are the exciton and the charge transfer state, and two processes going to the ground state, and then a Boltzmann equilibrium in between them governed by these two upward and downward rate constants. And this can be solved analytically, and that's the analytic curve. And if you see, if we pre present these points on a normalized scale, they follow very nicely the whole curve and also reproduce the expected um, slope here in the middle which is expected for a Boltzmann equilibrium. So actually what we show here is that the, this sharp drop here with the, uh, with the softening at the end is a function of the Boltzmann equilibrium. So what we see here is that the population is transferred from the charge transfer state to the local excitation state. So in systems where the uh, driving force is zero or even negative, the excitations dwell mainly on the LE side and only um, less frequently on the CT side, so that obviously the exciton properties become more important. And this can be seen here at the, the open graphs. Um, they refer to the maximum EQE. And you see here, of course, the well-known um, result for Y6 in orange that stays even close to zero driving force. The EQE stays up um, close to 80%. And that is um, uh, just because of the very long exciton lifetime in this material. It lives um, for around a nanosecond or even more. So um, we have concluded that um, the exciton is very important and we have not seen, we did not need to include hybridization in this simple model and still it fits nicely. So is there no influence at all of the, of the hybrid CT states? I said they must form, so they should be around. Well, we should not forget that we have to form charge separated states. And we have taken one of these materials, um, namely WF3 OIDTBR, and uh, uh, measured at Politecnico di Milano the charge separation time, which can be done by looking at the transient Stark effect. I cannot go into detail now. There is um, uh, papers of the Banerjee group um, uh, uh, detailing this, this very much. So it's just you look at the field caused by charge carriers which are separating and it, which is felt by the neutral uh, molecules in the surrounding. And this is this you can measure by pump probe spectroscopy. And we see actually that the relative transient Stark effect goes up over a time scale of 40 picoseconds. So this is our charge separate charge separation time. And when we match all the information that we have, all the experimental evidence, then we find out we can only match it if we assume that the charge transfer, charge separated state equilibrium actually must be on the charge separated side. So it seems um, um, that the charge transfer state is, is um, depopulated in both regions, it, it also towards the LE and also towards the, the CS side. Now, um, how can this be explained? There is a paper from Cha et al, from the Duran group from a few years ago. And they showed um, that if you have um, a, a mixture, a, a blend, a photovoltaic blend, where amorphous phase is in contact with aggregated phase, then you have an additional driving force. And this can, can bring the, the, the charge transfer states apart and, and uh, su supply the driving force towards the charge separated state. And of course, um, the energy level, the, the height of the charge transfer state in the intimately mixed phase will depend on hybridization. So now, um, as an outlook, we are currently um, having doing detailed studies in the extraordinary project um, which in which we work together with Ditonea, Safa Shoy and Denis Atrienko, University of Potsdam and Max Planck Institute to look in great detail into what happens um, exactly at the charge transfer interface to 
um, resolve these details. Thank you very much for the um, attention. This is the this is the list of people who have contributed and the funding which helped us to do these studies. Thanks very Thank much. You, David. Uh